thank you ensemble choir for your ministry to us here at Southern Heights Baptist Church. We, I just love this choir. I love the way you sing. I am grateful to God and many times I just listen to you in my home. For a long time we were not able to get the uh, DVDs on the, the mini cam uh, published. And we are not going to go public with anything that uh, you don't feel comfortable with. But I just love the music that you bring to this body. Thank you for singing. Songs that go out of the Word of God with content. Not just emotions, but with content that tells me about a Savior who loved us and gave his life a ransom for our sins. And uh, we are gathered here today to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. It's an honor and privilege to do so. And today I want to focus on the most important person in all of the scriptures. Uh, sorry I didn't get all this together up here, but Sometimes we have a lot of little irons in the fire that we try to pull together. This morning we're going to talk about Jesus Christ. If you don't want to learn about Jesus Christ, you've come to the wrong church. And to those in Radio Land, if you don't want to hear about Jesus, then you're tuned to the wrong station. Because the one <laughs> in which we advertise and broadcast on... Jesus is the focus of the whole program. And believe me, the sermon that I have worked on for today, I could not deliver it if I had 20 sermons to preach. Christ. He appears 46 times in the book of Ephesians. That's where, that's where we're based at this morning. We're talking about the headship of Christ and its implications for the local church. And thirdly, its implications for the home. And I want you to stick with me because we're going to talk about this. We need to address this particular topic. Christ is the uh, one whom God uh, sent forth. He means, the word means, the anointed one. If you didn't get the outline, I gave it to the ushers, uh, some of them this morning. I'd love for you to have it, although you don't necessarily have to have that in order to follow me this morning. I would ask that you keep your Bible open and uh, your thumbs, your thumb rather, ready to turn the pages. Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. You know, I was just thinking, who is it that does not want to know who Jesus is? For he still the waves of the sea, and he walked up on the water, and he said to the storm, be still. Hold your peace. People looked and said, who is this man? That even the wind and the waves listen to his voice and obey him. Who is this man that can say to a fisherman, go down and cast your net into the sea and pick up the first fish that comes and he will have a coin in there to pay my taxes. Who is this man that can command the waves and the sea and the storms and nature itself? His name is Jesus. He's called the Christ. And in the handout, please get it before you leave. 
I'd like for you to notice how that term translates itself in the New Testament. But before we go there, I want you to notice Ephesians chapter 1, if you will. Let's put our eyes down on 21 and 22 and 23. And it reads, far above all principalities and powers. Let me back up to verse 20. Thank you for having your Bible with you. It says, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Who is it that doesn't want to know who this person is? God says to him, uh, when he raised him from the dead, seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, and the right hand is a place of power and authority and might. Nobody challenges the right hand of God because he has all power. All might, all dominion. He controls everything. The wind, the waves, the seas. I want to tell you something. He controls your heartbeat. Thank God for supplying us. Amen. With life. Who is it that doesn't want to know Jesus? Every problem that you could ever face in life, Jesus has the answer to that problem. Get to know him above getting to know anybody else or anything else. He's worthy of your time. Even the demons cried out. We know who you are, Jesus. Have you come to torment us before the times? And Jesus could say, hold your peace, come out of him. What is your name? I'm legion. I have thousands of myself occupying this man. And, and Jesus said, hold your peace. Come out of him. And they came out and ran down into the pigs. And the pigs ran into the water and killed themselves. They drowned. Who is it that doesn't want to know who Jesus is? He is the Lord of glory. He is the King of kings. He is the ruler the controller of the universe. For he spoke and it was done. He is alive today. He's alive from the dead, seated at the right hand of the throne of God with all might and dominion and power invested in his name. What is your problem? Bring your problem to Jesus and I assure you that if you meet his conditions and obey him, he will work out the details for your life. Doesn't matter where you are or what the struggle is. This person called Christ is one whom you need to get to know. Amen. And right where you are, whether you're in your automobile, in your home, uh, in worship, you can open your life up to him. And he promises that he will meet you at the point of your need today. You see, I'm taking off on this thing about uh, we should get to know who Jesus is. Because many of us don't know who he is. 
Many people have gotten religion, have joined the church, have been baptized, and they do their good works thinking that somehow that's going to earn them the right to go to heaven. When we read in Ephesians chapter 2 uh, this morning, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You cannot work your way into heaven. You cannot live good enough in order to please God. God accepts only the righteousness of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the only thing that you can bring to him that would be acceptable in his sight. Now I hope you know him in a very personal and intimate way. For we're told in Titus 3, 5 and 6, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercies, he saved us Amen. by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost which he shed forth upon us abundantly. See, <laughs> you need to know Jesus, but in order to know Jesus, the Spirit of God is the one who is our teacher. And he will instruct us in the ways of the Lord Jesus. Christ, his name means in the Old Testament, he is called the anointed one. Now that's a unique term because it's thrown around in today's world in our preaching and, and teaching. Uh, have you been anointed? Yeah. Well, I got news for you this morning. If you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and trusted him as your personal savior, yes, you can say, I have been anointed. Yeah. See, if you call yourself a Christian, according to Acts 11, 25, 26, if you call yourself a Christian, you see, the disciples were first, were called Christians first at Antioch. In other words, those followers of Jesus, those who wanted to learn and to know about the ways of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, under the ministry of Barnabas, one of the greatest pastors in the New Testament, Acts yeah, chapter 11. Tremendous man, a man filled with compassion and love for people, willing to give, willing to sell his property. Barnabas, son of consolation, under his ministry, he went out and gathered Paul and brought Paul in to the church at Antioch, and Barnabas took a solid year teaching the Apostle Paul and others in Antioch. And there under the ministry of teaching the Word of God, don't stop coming to Bible classes. Make time for those things because that's where you understand who Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, really is. And so the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Are you a Christian? Where do you get the right to call yourself a Christ-like person? That's what it means that the characteristics of Jesus Christ now are being duplicated in your life only to a certain degree, of course, because you can never be exactly who Jesus was and is because Jesus is God. Jesus is the anointed one from God. That term is used in the Old Testament in many, many ways, and hopefully we'll point that out to us here this morning. As you focus up on who is Jesus, how much do you know about him? Obviously, if it's used 46 times in the book of Ephesians, chapter uh, between chapters 1 and 6, he has to be an important individual in the plan of God. And what I'd like to suggest today is that, listen, if you want to know the fullness of God 
in today's world, you have got to understand who Jesus is. He loved us so much until he laid down his life a ransom for my sins and for your sins. And he is the one who fulfills all of the Old Testament prophecies. How many of us have read through the Old Testament? You don't have to answer that one. But all of the prophecies of God, all of the promises of God focus upon one person and his name is Jesus. Then here he comes in the New Testament and he's called Christ, meaning the anointed one of God, the perfect one of God, the one who would, of course, take to himself the sins of all of mankind. No matter what one has done, murder, committed adultery, fornication, killed, blasphemed, all of those things, Jesus takes all of the sins of the world upon himself and he goes to Calvary and he stands in your place and he stands in my place this morning. And in addition to that, he is taking our name before the throne of God. Amen. Jesus is praying for you this morning, wherever you are. And God hears his prayers. That's hallelujah, shouting territory. Thank you, Jesus, because he is the anointed one of God. And I can say that he is the president of a corporation called Christianity. If you're going to be a part of that, you have to know who the Lord Jesus Christ is. He has earned the right to tell us what to do. He is, as we read, the head of the church. Thank you, Lord. You didn't leave us to ourselves to know what to do. You gave us instruction from your word as to how your church ought to function and how it ought to operate. And Christ is the head of the church. I want to challenge you this morning as we think on this subject. Jesus makes some exclusive claims for himself. And he claimed to be able to still the raging waves of the sea and say, peace be still. And they obeyed him. You see, Jesus is the Messiah of the Old Testament. And since you have your Bible, then you don't mind turning just a little bit. Go back to the book of Daniel, chapter 9. And we see this word in the book.